Um, let's start uh, uh, today's lecture. Uh, today's lecture is about feature uh, extraction. Um, I will try to kind of uh, introduce some of the basic of the uh, feature extraction. Uh, and also try to provide in some of the uh, the latest technologies uh, that are for the feature extraction. Uh, but uh, in this lecture, I try to kind of remain uh, that uh, basically the uh, uh, the fundamental uh, feature extraction part. And uh, this part will be the uh, main topic in the uh, the coding assignment uh, one, which will be released in the uh, the Wednesday. So uh, the please other uh, be the uh, the check. Uh, this uh, the, the uh, lecture carefully. Okay, so last time we discussed about uh, the speech uh, recognition uh, can be uh, divided to the several components. Uh, like for example, by using the, uh, the, the sum rule, uh, conditional independence assumption uh, and the product rule, we can actually factorize each of the problem to the acoustic modeling lexical language modeling. Uh, in the HMM based system, and even the the end-to-end the -end system, we usually separating the feature extraction and the other part. And today, uh, the, we will talk about the feature extraction part. But high level, uh, what they are doing is converting the waveform to the other uh, continuous vector. So that's a kind of a high level part. And the, I have a couple of uh, the remark for today's uh, the feature extraction. So first, the speech extraction is that uh, I think not only for speech, many of the area generally very empirical. So this part, uh, uh, the, the speech feature extraction is for me uh, quite empirical and quite engineering. And the reason of the current form of the uh, feature extraction, log mail filter bank, is actually uh, the based on the many aspects. Of course, we should get a better performance, but not only for that. It should be very first. It should be kind of online. It should be the, uh, the, the, uh, a good compatibility and so on. Based on these kind of various factors, a uh, current uh, uh, the feature extraction is formed. So some people may ask him why we use you know uh, the, the Fourier transform, why use, we use you know other transform and so on. Um, I usually have uh, several answers to uh, the the uh, the the, uh, the satisfy your questions. But generally, it's not a perfect answer, simple answer. It's because, again, the, this try to satisfy all this kind of requirement. Uh, and then engineering the, uh, the, this kind of uh, current solution is uh, the, uh, the, the introduced. So this is quite kind of difficult uh, uh, to explain it. And also, each operation is based on the signal processing. So I'm sure that the many people here actually also have a uh, signal processing background, uh, but some of them are not. Uh, but uh, in this lecture, we do not kind of uh, uh, the deep, deeply kind of uh, dig into the uh, the signal processing part. So just a basic operation like uh, the short-term Fourier transformation and so on is fine as a kind of knowledge. And then some of the empirical part is not only for the, this kind of uh, the property, but it's also kind of motivated by the human auditory system. That is also uh, the one part that the making the kind of this uh, feature extraction part to be a little bit complicated. Okay, so uh, the, let's uh, the move to the uh, the, the uh, actual process. So the goal of this uh, the, the feature extraction part is actually to convert the uh, the waveform signal to this uh, the, the spectral. Uh, the representation. And <laughs> actually, I want to ask which one is more? Uh, the, you guys find some patterns. <laughs> uh, the left one or the right one? The, the, which one do you think would have a more visible patterns? Yeah, the, thank you for <laughs> having a straightforward answer. Some people actually say that the left one has more <laughs> patterns. Yeah, I, I also uh, think that the right side has some pattern, but it's also based on the knowledge that, you know, uh, we know some kind of other uh, spectral structure. Uh, so, but anyway, the, uh, the feature extraction is uh, making the other uh, feature to be more uh, the, 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 uh, the tractable and the, 
this is actually quite the uh, the, the um um related to our intuition uh that instead of having a low uh, the signal which has a lot of noises maybe we can find some kind of better representation which generally actually the, the after the visualization it becomes uh, the, the more patterns which means that the uh the, the visualization and the the feature extractions are quite kind of related and uh, actually uh the, this uh, the waveform is not easy for human to read, but some very trained people actually read spectrogram, and then uh, I could find that the, this one is you know uh, the two and so on. Uh, by the way, I I cannot do that, <laughs> but some other people actually could do it. This means that the, uh, the this uh, spectral feature has uh, the, the, some information about the the other uh, the, uh, text or form uh, and so on. Okay, so this is a kind of our, our target, uh, how to make that kind of our waveform to be the more uh, the, the, uh, the more uh, the visible patterns uh, of the features. And then let's move to the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the process one by one. First, the, what is a waveform? So waveform is a, a kind of our, uh, the, the combating the sound pressure. Uh, the, and then that kind of sound pressure Vibration is uh, the captured by the uh, the electric signal, so we just kind of are uh, the uh, the the purely uh, recording the uh, the the, uh, the sound pressure uh, that uh, becomes the waveform, and the, since you know that once we kind of combining this to the the, uh, the electric form, and then the, the we can actually you know generating it again, and we can actually hearing it right, which means that this wave uh, the pressure sound pressure information is are sufficient to capture all the kind of sound information. But uh, this one is uh, uh, quite uh, the, the, uh, the, the dense uh, the feature, uh, the representation in terms of the time. Just having a one-dimensional uh, waveform and having a very kind of a dense uh, the, the, the representation the, across the time. And uh, in this lecture, I mostly uh, focus on the uh, single channel. Cases, but of course there are, we will have a lot of cases that the uh, the uh, the, the, the waveform can be uh, the, the represented as uh, several uh, the uh, the signals. For example, the the most uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the famous the common example is that our ears have two, which means that we usually capture two signals, and uh, uh, Alexa has the seven microphones uh, and so on. Actually, more is better uh, to capture uh, various kind of information. Uh, but generally, uh, the, the, in this kind of lecture, we just more focus on the single channel. OK, but actually, this sound pressure is a continuous value, <laughs> continuous function. So it, it was not easy to actually uh, the, directly uh, the doing it with the, uh, the, the, uh, the computer. So we have to have a discretization process. So this prioritization in the uh, time domain and discretization, uh, well, we call it the quantization in the, uh, the amplitude domain. We actually using this kind of a two ways of the discretization, uh, uh, the sampling and the quantization to uh, the make the speech uh, the signal to be the friendly for the computer. And then the, the the question here is, you know, how often we kind of are a sample the data, and how how much we kind of quantize the uh, amplitude, and that what's the so called sampling rate. So nowadays, uh, the everyone may use the a lot of kind of audio device, and then some of you may heard that the, the sampling rate, like uh, generally forty eight kilohertz. Is for the DVD sounds, right? And the forty-four one point of kilohertz for the the, the, the CD sound. <laughs> I guess it's now that uh, everyone almost using this uh, the forty-eight kilohertz. But it's actually uh, this uh, the of course you know higher is better, right? To uh, the <laughs> model the uh, the 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 very precise uh, waveform pattern. But uh, at the same time, you know uh, the it, we don't need uh, so much uh, the, the high resolution. 
So there are a lot of kind of perceptual study. And it turns out that the, the another 20 is fine for speech. By the way, that uh, for other sounds like music and so on, higher frequency is important. So that's why still, you know, uh, the DVD sounds and so on is using 48 kilohertz. But for speech cases, actually 16 kilohertz or 20 kilohertz is fine. So that the actually the mostly in our kind of uh, the, the uh, the, the speech, uh, uh, the, the recognition, uh, the application, we are uh, using a 16 kilohertz uh, the, the sampling. By the way, there are still uh, a uh, lot of data from the 8 kilohertz sampling, which is the, the telephone uh, the, uh, cases. Since, you know, we used to be have a lot of kind of issue in the bandwidth, you know, we want to anyway compress the data and so on. So the 8 kilohertz is actually Significantly, uh, the the, uh, the the uh, the degrade the quality. You know the the recent our kind of our, uh, the high resolution audio from the DVD and the telephone telephone speech is actually quite distorted, right? But it is still audible, right? Lot of actually uh, the, the experiments, and then we find that this side a to care health. It's a kind of a minimum reasonable uh, the sampling rate uh, to uh, the the the, uh, the deliver the sound. So uh, the, due to the kind of a large uh, the, the, uh, application in the telephone, we still have a lot of 8 kilohertz uh, example, but mostly nowadays uh, that we actually using a 16 uh, kilohertz. And then the, uh, uh, the discretization, quantization part, uh, we usually using a 16 bit. So please remember that 16, 16, that is a kind of a basic, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the discretization uh, for the uh, waveform. And there are actually a lot of uh, the format uh, for the, uh, the waveform. And the, uh, the mostly, uh, I think many people are using a different wave uh, the format, right? Uh, of course, web format people have heard that, right? How many people ha have heard of web format, WAP, yeah. Uh, MP3. Okay. FLAC, FLAC. Not so many people. Okay. Uh, well, actually, more than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, these three are mostly used in the speech, uh, the, the processing, but we also have a lot of uh, the, the other uh, the format, uh, depending on the kind of our purpose or depending on the uh the the conventions uh the and so on so actually speech data uh the we also using the uh, format for the sphere sph have you ever heard this format oh so you're good <laughs> maybe you are old <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> yeah sphere format is uh, the used for the uh, the old speech data and it's actually made by NISP. Uh, and the uh, but still that many of the famous database is sphere format, so we ha actually have to use it. Like uh, I, I, we will explain that in the, the in the the, the uh, some of the uh, following uh, the lectures. But the TMIT, uh, the TI digit, the Wall Street Journal, very famous database is actually based on the SPH format, sphere format. Okay. So uh, the this is a kind of uh, most of the uh, the, the web format, uh, and then the uh, but uh, again that uh, we usually using sixteen kilohertz and the sixteen bit, and uh, many of the re recent recording is forty four point one or forty eight kilohertz. So uh, the, the we ha actually have to convert it, and the down sampling is actually uh, the quite easy. That uh, we can just using uh, many of the tools uh, and so on. And I often use the socks, but the probably people here, FFM is maybe more famous. Uh, but uh, uh, okay, maybe I can also ask how many people have ever used socks, SOX? Okay. And FFM. Oh, actually, not so, not so different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, usually, two, these two are used uh, the, the, since it's very kind of uh, the, the uh, the, the Linux or other uh, Unix or other other uh, operation uh, uh, the system uh, friendly uh, and so on. So uh, the, usually uh, that we using the socks to 
down sample to the 16 kilohertz. Uh, the, by the way, when we have a 8 kilohertz cases, uh, we usually up sample and then make it to the 16 kilohertz and then dealing with it. But uh, up sampling is actually not very recommended because there, there, there's nothing in, the, the, in terms of the, uh, the from uh, the, the, the 8 to 16 kilohertz information. So it's just kind of a, uh, the, the, uh, the interpolate to get such kind of high frequency, which is not very accurate. So uh, the up sampling is not the, uh, the, the recommended way, but as an easy solution, we usually do it. Okay, so now we know the waveform. So uh, the, let's uh, the move to the, uh, the feature extraction part. Now we know this part, right? And the feature extraction, I just put it as a kind of a single box. And uh, you know, many people may know that, you know, you just use an uh, mail filter bank or MSC, uh, the, it actually sounds like just one tool, right? But it's actually quite complicated. Uh, the, we have at least five blocks. Uh, by the way, I usually kind of uh, skipping the pre-emphasis, which is also included in the, uh, the coding assignment. So it's going to be like actually six. But anyway, the, we usually have uh, this uh, the five to five operation or four operation, uh, depending on the uh, our application, but uh, it depends on how to kind of count STFT. For example, STFT is at the comport of the framing uh, the, the, uh, and the, uh, the, the multiplication uh, the, of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Fourier transform and so on. So it can be actually split to uh, two or three. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, the make one block at the STFT. And uh, next, then that we're gonna have our uh, the, the taking the magnitude, and then we will perform the log mel filtering, and then uh, uh sorry, uh, mel filtering, and then taking the log. And the last part is kind of optional. I will briefly explain each part of one by one. Uh, but uh, actually, it's changing the uh, the the, uh, the number to uh, the interesting kind of a domain. So first, uh, the the. Uh, the sample is that uh, after the discretization, it is just a discrete one-dimensional symbol. And then after the STFT, it becomes a complex and uh, some dimension, uh, the, uh, the, the feature. And after the, uh, the magnitude operation, it becomes uh, the, the positive <laughs> vector. And then mail filtering uh, the, is the applied. And uh, the, finally, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, log operation uh, is applied. And uh, that's how uh, that we visualize each component. First, again, you know, this part, uh, is that full? Oh, it's not audible. Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, anyway, this is a kind of a, maybe I can try it, whether it's audible or not. Today's the system is improved, I think. Uh, just a tool. <laughs> so this other uh, waveform. First, uh, the, the performing the short-term Fourier transform. And then this is actually complex, so it's not easy to visualize. But uh, if we kind of uh, the using it as a real and imaginary part, uh, it becomes like this. There's some pattern here, by the way, but they're mostly not so much pattern. Uh, let's take our energy here. There's some pattern, but not so much. And then after that, we take our, uh, the, uh, the mail filter, and then, uh, sorry, this is actually after the mail filter, mail, mail filtering as well. And then uh, the, finally, we take a log, and then it's a little bit more visible. So the features that are coming from this one to this one, this one, this one. So this is a kind of a, a process that, uh, as, as I said, it can be a little bit more visible, more patterns, has more patterns than the, the usual, uh, uh, and so on. And the, the last part, uh, uh, DCT is 
important to get the, uh, the features that is fitting to the Gaussian model. But now the, the Gaussian is not used anymore. So I didn't really kind of explain this part. OK, so uh, the, that's the kind of a high level overview. Inside, again, inside of this kind of a, uh, the feature extraction is having a several kind of a, uh, the layers. And it's actually having a several operations. And uh, I will talk about the, each of the components one by one. First part, uh, short-term Fourier transform. So this part is actually try to capture the periodic component, which is the most basic uh, operation uh, of the waveform, not only for the speech, any of the kind of uh, the sound analysis that uh, uh, we usually are uh, performing the, uh, the waveform. Uh, the the uh, short-term the, the Fourier term transform, and then uh, this uh, the is basically uh, the, the based on the, the configuration. Basically, we try to kind of uh, the capture the around the ten to hundred millisecond of the periodic signal. And why I can we kind of focus on this kind of a scale? This is a kind of a, uh, the scale that the phoneme is changing. So that's why we kind of using our, uh, the, this uh, order of the, uh, the time scale uh, the, from the 16 uh, the kilohertz, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the order of the time sampling, uh, the order of the, uh, the time signal. So this part uh, is uh, the basically uh, that we just kind of are uh, the getting the weighted sum operation of the original signal uh, by using some kind of convolutional operation with the exponential other uh, information. And this is actually imaginary, uh, the, the, a complex number. Uh, so that this other uh, the, the part is actually uh, the periodic signal. And then by using this operation, uh, we can actually get the other uh, periodic uh, the signal, uh, the end of all one. So this is actually uh, the basic uh, short-term Fourier uh, the, uh, transform. But it's actually having a lot of, by the way, unknown uh, the part. First, what is this weight? How to decide this one? This one is actually uh, the, the exponential inside and it's kind of a summation uh, the, the index. So it cannot be, uh, the, the, uh, the, it can be actually uh, the marginalized. And F is a kind of index of the frequency. So the important part is to uh, the, uh, the provide uh, this uh, the weight function. And then uh, we actually having a lot of parameter for here. Uh, like we could use a Gaussian, we could use a humming, or we could use a Hunning, uh, and so on. Basically, uh, this uh, the, the operation is to uh, the, the, the approximate this uh, the summation uh, of the minus infinity to infinity to the kind of bar. Uh, the, the uh, range that we can actually handle so that we can compute it uh, in the, uh, the, the, uh, the in our kind of a, uh, the normal co computational scale rather than infinity. And then the, the, this kind of a size uh, the, is, uh, the becomes uh, the, uh, the size that we want to kind of get the uh, signal, uh, uh, the periodic information from the signal. So this becomes a kind of a, uh, the, usually 25 millisecond or 32 millisecond, uh, depending on our kind of application uh, the end of so on. So by taking this operation, uh, we could actually convert the signal uh, from the waveform to this kind of the representation. And again, this uh, the, the representation, I just using the real and the imaginary part since this is a complex number, but usually we discard the phase information and just only taking the power. And then that will be used for uh, our speech uh, the feature and so on. I will just explain that uh, why kind of we take the, uh, the, the uh, power and the discard the phase and so on later. But anyway, I am expecting that some of the people having a good signal processing uh, the background could follow it. And some people that having a CS background and don't have so much experience with the signal processing may not fully follow this part. And then I actually prepare this slide. Actually, this operation is quite similar to the convolution. 
operation are there. Actually, we can write this one. Other, other convolutional operations are even in PyTorch uh, and so on. And then the other weight, usually convolution weight, for example, this part uh, is actually estimated in the neural network operation. But in the, uh, the short term Fourier transform, actually this part is designed by our kind of other, the, 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 uh, the known operation. Again, this one is known operation, and this part is also uh, using the humming or hanging uh, to uh, make this other part. Uh, uh, the, to be uh, the, uh, the getting the uh, periodical signal in the convolution operation. But anyway, uh, if you are not very familiar with this operation, please think this is uh, one of the convolution operations. And uh, by the way, uh, there are a lot of actually activities. Uh, why not you know, replacing this operation as an actual convolution, uh, the convolution neural network? So many people actually working on trying to replace the, uh, this the STFT operation in the other uh, convolutional uh, neural network as a kind of research uh, the, 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 the phase. So this is called the runnable uh, the front end and so on. Okay, so after we get this kind of other uh, the, uh, the feature uh, for each kind of a time frame, we actually are uh, using the other uh, shift operation to uh, the, the process this other uh, Gaussian uh, uh, not Gaussian, sorry, uh, the humming uh, window to get to the kind of STFT operation for the, uh, some specific kind of time frame. And then we actually applying this one to the next frame and so on. So note that this uh, the, the, uh, the size, usually it is 25 milliseconds, and this shift is usually different. And the shift is kind of less than uh, 10 milliseconds. Uh, less than half of the window size in general. Otherwise, we actually missing the information by kind of taking a very large stride. Yes. Um, now that I talked about, you know, uh, the 25 millisecond as a kind of a general window size, and the 10 milliseconds is a shift. Or maybe in some cases, I also open in the 32 millisecond uh, the, the window size, and the 80 millisecond for the shift size depending on the kind of our configurations uh, and so on. But I am actually speech, more for the speech side of the people. So I usually using a millisecond. Uh, but the audio people, they may also use a millisecond, but they often use a, a, a point, a sample point. <laughs> so uh, the, this is a little bit kind of uh, the, 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 uh, the give you, uh, the, make some confusions to you guys. So. Uh, the, to avoid this, that the, I just having a, this kind of uh, equation. For example, if we're using a 16 kilohertz sampling cases, and then 25 millisecond window, uh, this means that the 16,000 times 25 divided by 1,000. So it's actually have a, a 400 uh, point uh, per second, uh, 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 per the, uh, the power window, sorry, the power window, okay. Uh, and the opposite case is, if we're using the, say, 512, uh, the, uh, the point window size, which means that actually the, by dividing by the sampling rate, it becomes 32 milliseconds. So I actually want you to be familiar with this conversion uh, so that you know, uh, that some people are discussing with you about uh, the, the speech and the audio processing. Some people may use that. The, the, I use a, uh, the, the 520 point uh, uh, window size, uh, or I use a 25 millisecond with, uh, the window size, and, uh, and uh, we should actually convert it uh, in our brain. So the first actually short quiz question is actually about it. So uh, the 512 point windows. Uh, the corresponding to uh, the how many milliseconds uh, that is the kind of uh, the first short quiz. Uh, yes. Yeah. By the way, the answer is sixty-four milliseconds. Yeah. So uh, the uh, hundred milli hundred hours thirty-six million. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the one hundred thousand hours is a scale that we usually make a commercial product. And the, the amount of the, uh, the number of frames goes to billion, actually. Yeah, 36 billion. 
And then the, the uh, some of you might heard uh, the OpenAI recently uh, that released uh, the speech recognition system called the uh, Whisper, which is using 680,000 hours, so which corresponds to 250 billion. Of course, still, you know, the, the compared with super large language model, uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the, we didn't go to the scale of the, uh, the uh, trillion, but uh, uh, the, we are usually actually working on this scale. At least, you know, the, the, the 10 to 100 million is the usual size for speech uh, the processing. So that's why I really want you guys to the, apply to the AWS credit <laughs> and some other GPU. <laughs> Otherwise, that uh, you couldn't actually uh, make it, it's uh, okay for the uh, uh, the term project, but the uh, even for the uh, the coding assignment, uh, you guys may need uh, to handle the the order of the uh, the million or ten million samples. So it's better to do that. And the yeah, I also calculate. I'm just curious, you know, uh, the, the how much. So the one year is like this eight. 8,000, so 10,000 hours, right? So OpenAI's uh, Whisper is actually using uh, 70 years of the speech. It's actually not so much, right? <laughs> yeah. The, we, yes, the, the, it can be, you know, more than the one person's kind of uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the using the speech, but it's actually just one person's uh, the, uh, the little bit, uh, not little bit, more than the one person's the the the, the speaking speech, uh, the in their entire life, but just two or three, right? And everywhere, you know, we are speaking. So billions of the people are speaking. Then, then, uh, we actually have a tons of speech. So yeah, uh, the, probably these numbers can be increased more and more uh, in the future. Okay. So uh, the, uh, that's about the SDFT, short-term Fourier transform, yes. So next part is uh, the, uh, the after taking the kind of a power uh, operation, uh, the, it is uh, the, uh, looks like this. By the way, uh, the, the signal energy is having a very different dynamic range. So just checking the kind of energy is not always good in terms of making it visible. So we usually actually taking the log uh, the, to make this kind of to be visible. Uh, the, now the, the, the actually power is having this kind of a pattern. But we actually empirically know that the lower uh, the frequency of the signal should have more speech information. So uh, this is actually a lot of kind of uh, the perceptual experiments uh, we found that the uh, this uh, the lower uh, the uh, signal should have more kind of uh, the emphasized. So to do that, uh, the people actually are using the metal uh, the filter bank, and I will quickly explain it. But mostly the uh, the the, uh, the the metal filter bank sounds like a very complicated, and that's actually very complicated. But uh, as an operation, what we are doing is just a matrix operation. And then how to kind of uh, get uh, this matrix is a kind of a metal filter bank. So please remember that. It. So first, uh, we try to use the kind of different scale than the normal uh, the, the, uh, frequency scale. That's again, based on the kind of perceptual study that we are having a good uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the ability to uh, the, get the information in the lower uh, the, the energy of the signal. So we try to imitate uh, this kind of a function. And then the, the other people actually come up with several other versions uh, of the other uh, the, uh, function. One of them are uh, uh, like this. Uh, so this may not be so much uh, intuitive, so the, we just have a kind of a, a figure here. So this is actually the, the male uh, scale. So as you see that, you know, uh, the, the, the beginning of the part is almost linear, right? Almost we just the passing the information that the frequency, but the higher, and then actually the uh, this uh, the the male uh, information is actually not so much increased. So this is actually nonlinear uh, the, the the operation to consider to emphasize uh, not to emphasize kind of having a more other uh, uh, having extracting information in the lower frequency side, but the smearing the 
uh, the, the higher other uh, frequency side because it's not super important. So this is a kind of a log, uh, the, uh, sorry, other uh, male, other uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the frequency transform. And actually this is uh, not easy. And what we are usually doing is uh, the two first other uh, set of kind of a maximum and minimum uh, the frequency, uh, the, the, uh, the range. And then uh, the, taking the kind of a, this uh, kind of line, equal line in the male uh, the scale, equal line in the male scale corresponds to the nonlinear scale in the, the, the normal uh, the spectral uh, scale. And then taking the other uh, triangle filters to actually uh, the compute the, the smearing part uh, uh, the end of so on. It is a little bit complicated, but I uh, the, the prepare some of the references. So if you are guys are interested in, please also uh, check it. And the, this part is not included as a, uh, the, uh, the, our coding assignment. This uh, the, the operation is already prepared, by the way. Uh, Ivan, is that true, right? That we have a male matrix already, yes. But again, the, the, this other uh, function is making a kind of a, uh, the, the low frequency to have our, uh, the, the more inform uh, the, the, the information, almost like a original information comes from the uh, the spectrum. But uh, uh, the higher part is the basically weighted sum. So it's having a kind of long uh, the, the, uh, the line here uh, means that this kind of uh, the, the weighted sum operation, so weight is kind of uh, the, the represented here. So this means that the high frequency part uh, uh, is kind of a information is basically smearing. We still get some information, but it's not very important uh, so that we actually are taking this kind of uh, the smear, smearing uh, operation uh, the, and so on. And the, uh, the finally, uh, the, as it is actually uh, the performed in the energy, uh, the, the uh, power domain, and then finally taking a log. And then we uh, call this operation as a log mail filter one, or some people just calling F1, but this means a log mail uh, filter one, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so on. And the, uh, the, let's uh, the, the, uh, the discuss uh, about the log power versus log mail filter bank. So actually, left side is the power, and the right side is uh, the mail filter bank. Uh, first, this one has uh, many dimensions, right? Until uh, 100, uh, 500. But this one is actually uh, the, the 80. So just we compress the information. The, the, the filter, uh, the uh, uh, STFT information is still very redundant for us. So this is uh, one operation. And the other is, as I mentioned, uh, we emphasize more in the lower uh, spectral information and the higher resolution still have some information, but it's kind of a smearing information. That is kind of empirically uh, the very good for uh, the speech uh, processing. So this uh, the, the, uh, the operation is finally uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the obtained with this kind of uh, the, the, uh, the, the more patterned and more compressed uh, representation and so on. And then I often had a lot of questions about it. First, you know, why we discard the phase information? Uh, the, why taking the, uh, the, uh, the uh, power operation and so on? So the answer is perceptually, we actually don't need so much for the phase information. First, you know, phase information is actually just shifting the kind of a, a signal, right? Even if it is you know, shifted or not, shape is not different. Uh, so perceptually, it's not very important. Uh, also, by the way, she, the phase also sometimes has some kind of uh, the spectral uh, the, the structures. Uh, the, so it is actually not completely true, but uh, empirically, uh, the, yes. And actually, uh, this uh, the logic does not apply to the multi channel cases. In the multi channel cases, Phase information is super important. We actually consider the phase difference, and then we can actually find some uh, the, the, where the, the sound comes from. And then we could actually just, uh, the, the easily separate the signal and so on. So the, uh, the phase information is, is not super important in the single channel cases, uh, but for if we perform in the multi channel cases, it is very important. 
And the other frequent question uh, that Henshinji, we, we know most of other cool uh, the, the, the functions to convert uh, the signal uh, to that uh, more kind of pattern the information. Like uh, instead of using mail, we can use the bark or some other kind of a measure that is uh, that comes from the, uh, the perception. Well, we can also use a wavelet or whatever and so on. But uh, again, empirically, uh, there is not so much difference. <laughs> Just you know, having some other uh, dimension reduction and the uh, the emphasizing the low uh, the, the frequency signal is good enough feature. So due to that, that uh, still I think it started to be used. I don't know the ninety eighties or something like that. But still, uh, the many people are still using the uh, log mail filter bank or MSCC. Uh, and uh, next uh, the question. This is also very frequent question. Why we use a humming? We should use a humming, or we should. Why we have a lot of you know, uh, the 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 shift size and so on. Uh, there are a lot of actually hyperparameters uh, exist in the uh, the uh, feature extraction, uh, the end so on. And actually, uh, this part is very complicated. And in some cases also the the, the filter bank in, uh, the calculation requires some kind of rounding and so on. Rounding and the edge processing and so on is actually uh, the slightly different depending on the kind of implementation. So usually I couldn't actually reproduce exactly the same result uh, as the kind of uh, the, the, the several other libraries like uh, uh, Libroda and so on because of the very small difference in the many hyperparameters uh, in the uh, feature extraction side. And the, uh, the last question I often had is that the Mail filter bank, uh, the, what kind of information do we have? And actually, I would say that most of the information, except for the, the spatial information that I mentioned, the, the, the direction uh, the information, uh, mail is actually initially used for the perceptual uh, the, the, uh, measure uh, the, for uh, the speech recognition. But it actually turns out that it is also used for the speaker recognition and so on. And surprisingly, it is also used for the audio sound event, <laughs> the problem and so on. So even it is designed for the speech. So uh, the, the filter bank is, mail filter bank actually has a lot of information. Uh, and the, uh, the, 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 I would say that the uh, empirically, uh, the many reasons, but just kind of a good compressed information and sufficient feature, speech feature, uh, that is a kind of a mail filter bank. That is my kind of a, a personal opinion. And the, uh, I would recommend you to actually also talk to, you know, many other speech people here. Uh, that they may also have a lot of opinion about, you know, why we still using a mail uh, that, and so on. But my kind of a, uh, the experience is that, again, very good compression and still having uh, some speech, uh, not speech only, some features. Yeah, very kind of an abstract answer uh, that to me. Yeah, based on my experience. Okay, so I will quickly also that, that go through the other kind of advanced feature processing, which is delta feature and mean normalization. So uh, the delta feature is, by the way, one of the, uh, the, the technique uh, that came from Japan. <laughs> Famous technique came from Japan. Um, so later, we actually are using a lot of conditional independence assumption. And then, Actually, this one, from this one to this one, it is very different, right? Uh, this is, like, let's say, Gaussian mixture or the, a deep neural network and so on, and then generating the kind of speech and so on. This one is actually considering the all kind of a joint relationship, while it's actually cutting all the kind of other, other dependency uh, for the right side, right? But the, as a kind of modeling, uh, we often use this one to make the kind of our computational uh, the complexity uh, the smaller. But uh, again, this one is uh, doesn't consider kind of a relationship of the feature. So we usually uh, the, the, uh, the cannot capture uh, the, the uh, long context information for this kind of uh, approximation. And the one possibility is extending the feature to kind of including the, uh, the, the surrounding features, like the previous features and the next features, and then making it as a kind of new feature. That is what we usually do. But this actually has a kind of very high correlation in the feature. 
So that is actually especially not very good for the other uh, Gaussian cases. Although deep neural net cases, it is not so other uh, the uh, the uh, the not so kind of problematic. So instead, uh, we actually using the uh, the delta questions, and then using it as a kind of additional feature. And it turns out that uh, this kind of representation, it's uh, the dimension is not so much changed, uh, but this one has uh, more information uh, than the, uh, uh, the, the, this kind of uh, concatenating three features. So this uh, the delta feature originally was uh, quite often used in uh, the speech processing, but after deep neural network, this kind of uh, method is not so much used. And the next one is a uh, mean normalization. So this operation, uh, the is quite, I think people are familiar with uh, the, in terms of the, uh, the, the people may also call it whitening or whatever, right? Uh, this is just kind of a subtracting the mean. This is a kind of a, uh, the, in terms of the machine learning perspective or statistical perspective, we just try to kind of remove the bias, right? But in the speech uh, the processing, this actually has uh, more meanings. So actually the, the, the original signal is uh, the, the often convoluted by the room impulse response and so on. Uh, or uh, the many of the kind of uh, the convolution distortion actually happens everywhere in our world. Like if you also even kind of uh, the call in the phone, this also usually has uh, some kind of convolution distortion, which is actually changing the voice, reverberation changing the voice, right? And uh, the, if you use a, a, the phone, the, this slightly change the voice and so on, right? This is comes from this convolution operation. And then this one, we want to remove it. And uh, fortunately, after the short-term Fourier transform, if this kind of convolution distortion is not very long, it's actually represented as a multiplication. It had a lot of approximation, but uh, anyway, it can be approximated to be represented as a multiplication. And then after this multiplication, taking the log, and then this part can be actually separated. Uh, the convolution part and the, uh, the original source part is actually separated in the addition. And look at this one. This one is actually doesn't depend on the time. So by taking the kind of a, a mean normalization, we could actually removing this channel distribution. So mean normalization, again, in general, to remove the bias, which is very important for machine learning, but in speech cases, it actually has a more kind of concrete meaning. We could actually remove the uh, channel distortion and so on. Okay, so, and then at the last two slides is just but quickly, you know, it's more for the classical signal processing, but uh, the, what's happening in the, uh, the research phase, I want to explain. Part of part is that uh, as I mentioned, the uh, uh, log mail filter bank is actually still basic operation. Like, you know, short-term Fourier transform is a uh, complex but linear transformation, uh, uh, and also convolution, uh, the convolution, convolutional linear transformation. Taking the power is also basic operation. And the other uh, mail is actually, as I mentioned, it's written as a matrix. And the taking the log, all operation, uh, the, the convolution, uh, the power, mail, log, is actually basic function. So we could actually get a derivative, by the way. So that we actually putting some kind of learnable parameter somewhere in this kind of operation. Well, we can also uh, the actually using the speech enhancement or some other kind of signal processing. And where we have a, a base on a deep neural network. And then we actually get the back propagation because this is a kind of basic operation. So we actually can get the derivative. So this kind of approach of jointly optimizing the front end and the speech recognition is one of the very uh, the, the cool uh, the active research area now. So this is actually uh, one of the topic that we our group is actually quite actively working on this. And the second, uh, the uh, advanced topic is self-supervised learning. I'm very sure that people have heard the the web uh, the, the web to back to or some other self supervised learning, right? And this can be used as a, as a pre training fine tuning, 
But uh, many people actually using this kind of self-supervised learning model as a feature representation. How to do that? We just, you know, from the waveform, and uh, let's say this one is like a, a, the WebDubec2 or Hubert or WebRM or whatever, self-supervised learning. And then we just do the whole other computation, and then we just extract in the feature here. This one is turns out to be super powerful. So again, people may also using the fine tuning, but this kind of just extracting a feature itself is super powerful. So this is actually uh, the, the, the starting to be used as a replacement of the uh, logmail filter bank, although it's computationally super expensive. And the other kind of cool direction is, again, the, our group is working on it. And the one of the TA, Shwankai, uh, is actually quite often uh, the, actively working on it. Instead of representing this uh, feature as a continuous vector, we actually replacing it as a discrete symbol. Like after the k-means and so on, we can actually convert this feature to be a discrete uh, the, the sequence. And then now speech recognition becomes very similar to NLP. <laughs> Input is discrete. So we actually can use, for example, machine translation. Uh, and then, you know, the, uh, the machine translation, but the input is a speech discrete token. And then output is a kind of our, our kind of text. And then we just using the other uh, the machine translation techniques and so on. This is also kind of advanced other uh, speech feature uh, technique, I would say. Not sure that can be fully replaced with the uh, uh, logmail filter bank. So currently, by the way, uh, the, the, this method and these methods are quite advanced. So many kind of systems are still using the logmail filter bank because it's very kind of uh, the efficient compilation. But I just want to kind of introduce it. And of course, that uh, some of the top topic like cell supervised learning can be also shown and more discussed in the, the, the later. Uh, so if you guys don't drop this course and <laughs> the, the, the very late uh, the, 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 the lectures are uh, including such kind of uh, the exciting areas and so on. Okay, so that's it from the today's talk. So first, I kind of spend a lot of time to explain about the uh, uh, logmail uh, filter bank. And I try to uh, uh, avoid to have a lot of mass or signal processing, just you know, visualize it and how it is, has some meaning and so on. Uh, the, I hope you guys have some kind of sense of what is uh, the logmail filter bank. That is actually fine uh, the, for uh, this lecture. Uh, and they, uh, this is uh, the, very complicated, I would say, the motivator by signal processing and perceptual property, but it's surprisingly quite working well. Again, still many other people try to replace it with the CNN and so on, but the majority is still using the, the logmail filter bank. Uh, the, it's the power of the signal processing, actually. Uh, and, but again, that are still, that we have a lot of kind of other research about this field uh, and so on. And this time, I also add a reference. And uh, one of the important uh, the, the, the remark is that, uh, again, you guys are lucky. Uh, we also have our, uh, the, the course in the digital signal processing in ECE. Uh, that's by the, uh, the Rich Stand, the Professor Rich Stand. Uh, he's an expert of this uh, the part. Uh, so if you want to know more about uh, the deeply about this area, I'm recommended to uh, the also take this course. Yeah, that's it. Uh, any questions?